So in the world of tennis, we had a couple months off after the last Grand Slam, but the Australian Open is somehow right around the corner. This is awesome. Taking place in January. As I mentioned, I was just in in New York over the summer for the U.S. Open, a tremendous, tremendous spectacle, sporting arena and environment to be in. Not a physical arena, but metaphorically, the space was tremendous. The grounds over there in in Flushing. And now it comes out that Serena Williams is withdrawing from this year's Australian Open because of because of her recovery from a hamstring injury that she sustained in the first round of Wimbledon last year, last June. And this is this is always a difficult topic for me because even though this isn't a surprise, given the injury that she sustained and given the typical timeline of a hamstring injury and the fact that she's 40 years old, I wasn't necessarily expecting her to play in the Australian Open, but anytime you see some official notification or an official headline, it just you just are taken aback a little bit because of just how profound Serena Williams is at 40. Again, she turned pro at age 14. She's been on the pro tour longer than I've been alive. I'm about to be 25 in February, she's been on the pro tour for 26 years. And in my opinion, she's the greatest female tennis player of all time. I think that she's one of the greatest athletes, male or female athletes, period, of all time. She's on the Mount Rushmore, in my opinion, for athletes. And what she's meant to the sport, just been huge. Obviously, she wasn't there for the U.S. Open, which I was gravely disappointed about, but I understood. But the thing about this injury, and especially the Australian Open, is this is pretty significant because the Australian Open is arguably Serena Williams' best tournament over the duration of her career. She has performed arguably the best at at the Australian Open than she has anywhere else. She's won seven Grand Slams at the Australian Open. Obviously, she has 23 overall, one behind Margaret Court, 23 for the most singles Grand Slam titles of all time. But she has seven at the Australian Open, which is a hard court surface, which is slightly less taxing on your body versus she has seven at Wimbledon, where you play on grass, three at the French, and six at the U.S. Open. So there's an argument to be made that between the U.S. Open, or rather between Wimbledon and the Australian, one of those is her best surface. And I would argue that the Australian Open is her best surface. That was the last time she reached the finals, was in 2019. She reached the Australian Open finals. She reached the finals in 2018 as well at the Australian Open. But it's significant because... What this means is if she's not playing in the Australian Open, we likely won't see her until next June, potentially at the earliest, because I don't think that she would risk playing at the French on the clay court. The instability of the court surface, especially with a lower extremity injury like a hamstring, Playing on a surface where you're sliding around a lot like the French doesn't seem like the most prudent decision. So then it shifts to, well, maybe she could play at Wimbledon, which is the grass court in June. Although, again, grass isn't the most stable surface either. You can't plant into the ground as firmly on a grass court, as you could say, an Australian or or a U.S. Open hard court. So we may not see her till next summer at the U.S. Open, which I realize now is perhaps only seven or eight months away, which isn't quite as daunting as a full year. But it's just a unfortunate reality that injuries are part of the sport and our favorite athletes sustain injuries and injuries expose their perceived mortality 
their perceived immortality, rather. It makes them more mortal. And that cloak of invincibility just isn't always there. And that's always a stark reminder for me. And when I got the official notification that she wasn't going to be participating, I almost thought to myself that, oh, she'll recover from this and she'll be fine. But we're seeing even Roger Federer is getting up there. He's 40 years old. He's on his literal last legs. He will skip out of the Australian Open because he's recovering from knee surgery. And Serena Williams now is the latest victim to have to withdraw from the Australian Open. And again, it's just the, the difficulty is how much these injuries just expose our favorite athletes' is, uh, mortality. And it's not a shock to me, given the injuries she's had to sustain over, over at least the recent stretch. Again, over the course of her career, she's been one of the most durable athletes ever. She's dealt with some knee injuries early on in her career. She had suffered a pulmonary embolism about a decade ago. And 2020, her season got cut short due to a Achilles tendon injury. But outside of that, she's been, and obviously now the hamstring, but outside of that, she's been a consistent. Whether or not she's won the Grand Slam or not, she's been present. She's been there. She's been durable. And that's just something that we can't take for granted. And the more that I see her dropping out of these tournaments, the more I'm reminded of that kind of sobering thought that she's not going to be around forever. Roger Federer is not going to be around forever. These great athletes across any sport, Tiger Woods just said he likely won't play in a major golf tournament again. That these, that these, that these just great athletes, transcendent athletes aren't going to be around forever. And this was just the latest example of, man, I saw that title and it just bummed me out. It just bummed me out. Hopefully she can recover soon. It seems like the recovery is going well. It's just the timeline wasn't sped up. She thought she'd be available to play. It didn't look like she obviously is anymore, but get back to the court soon, Serena because we would love to see you play.